So Chainlink um, was always built uh, to generate a new computing environment called an Oracle network. And Oracle networks generate consensus on everything that blockchains do not generate consensus about. So blockchains generate consensus on three things. Private key signatures, token ledgers, and state machines that are relatively limited. Those state machines cannot access any external system. They cannot speak with other state machines on other chains. And these state machines are called smart contracts. So basically, blockchains can come to consensus on these three things. And one of the main, really the main use cases of blockchain so far is tokenization, the signing of those token transfers through private keys, and the setting of certain conditions around those tokens, such as voting or exchange uh, using these state machines. Oracle networks expand the field of decentralized computing beyond blockchains into the realm of every other computation, just general computation, cross-chain computation. How Oracle networks work is you generate a very specific collection of nodes and you give them a very specific computation, such as the aggregation of market data prices to the point where the result of that aggregation cannot be manipulated by capturing any one of the data sources or any one of the nodes or even any one of or even a collection of exchanges or something like that. The decentralized computation generated by the Chainlink network was simply initially applied to market data. And that's why the Chainlink network is known as a data oracle. It's kind of like saying that um, the Amazon Web Services a world was at one point known as S3. Because at one point in time, the only thing that Amazon Web Services did was provide S3, and S3 was used to store images and, and various information for the first time in, in mass in the cloud. And likewise, when you look at the kind of Salesforce world with AppExchange, at a certain point, the whole Salesforce world was about a CRM. But now it's expanded to all these other things. And likewise, if you look at Microsoft Windows, the, the first really killer app of, of Windows was spreadsheets in Microsoft Office. And so at a certain point, that's what people used Windows for, is they used it for spreadsheets, and so it was, it was viewed as a spreadsheets tool. That's the widely understood use of an underlying technology, right? In the, in, in the case of AWS, it's the cloud. In the case of Salesforce, it's SaaS. And in the case of Microsoft Windows, it's operating systems for personal computers. Then all of these underlying technologies, because of their flexibility and their ability to go beyond those initial use cases, those initial killer applications of, of that technology, expanded, right? Microsoft Windows expanded to many ap applications running on personal computers. Amazon Web Services expanded to EC2 and various other computing and data and other categories of web services. And Salesforce expanded to various business applications using the SaaS model. And so this is the same kind of uh, stage that the Chainlink network is in, where initially its killer use case, its killer application was providing validated market data to DeFi, taking DeFi from a sub 100 million to an over 200 billion industry, because the appearance of that data in a validated consensus generated way allowed uh, the emergence of these new applications called DeFi. And so that is, is what it's known for, because that is what it has done to, to great success, right? Processing over, um, or basically enabling over $8.5 trillion worth of transaction value, primarily from data, primarily through those decentralized applications called DeFi. But now uh, the Chainlink network has expanded far beyond that and launched various additional services. Proof of Reserves uh, was launched, uh, I think, over three years ago, and it's the most widely used source of proof of reserves computations to create proof about what's backing an institution or what's backing a, a stable coin or a gold coin. Identity data, weather data, all kind, sports data, all kinds of other data to create uh, advanced on-chain contracts. Then the Chainlink network expanded beyond data into just computation, uh, random number generation, automation, and now functions very recently, which is the most advanced form of computation where you can actually combine any uh, API, any data with any computation provided by the user. And now the Chainlink Network's Oracle Network model, the Don model, the centralized Oracle Networks, has expanded also into cross-chain. Uh, because cross-chain is also a computation problem 
that greatly benefits from the decentralized computing that decentralized Oracle networks, and really only decentralized Oracle networks, in my opinion, uniquely provide real security for. And so now what you're seeing is that a platform that is a fundamentally a new way to do decentralized computation, a more advanced way to do decentralized computation that can be combined with blockchains is expanding and has expanded to more and more categories of these other computations. And now what, what you actually see is you see multiple uh, verifiable applications and decentralized applications using multiple different Chainlink Oracle networks. So using a few different data networks, using a few compute networks, using the cross-chain system. And this is the great outcome that we were hoping for and working towards with the community for Chainlink and the Chainlink network to have. It's that a greater and greater amount of verifiable and decentralized applications are able to be built with more and more advanced features in the form of an Oracle network. Those applications are able, therefore, to provide more value. So for example, now you can have um, real-world asset tokens with proof of reserve. You can have identity attached to them so that banks can purchase the real-world asset tokens. And then when the real-world asset tokens move over CCIP to the bank's chain, you can keep them updated with the status of the gold and the status of their NAV or their final settlement value of every day. And these advanced features are important because they take these decentralized verifiable applications to the next level. And that's the next level they need to reach to attract more and more usage uh, in order for our industry to not just be about tokenization and DeFi, but for it to be about tokenization, DeFi, and real-world assets. Then to be about tokenization, DeFi, real-world assets, and, and blockchain gaming or GameFi as, as the biggest category of gaming. And then decentralized insurance and then decentralized supply chain, and then decentralized ad networks, all because you can combine uh, blockchains with Oracle networks to create these advanced verifiable applications. And so the Chainlink network is, like many platforms, when they're in the early stages, not fully understood, they're, it's confused with you know, the initial killer app that it uh, has uh, succeeded in using to prove the computational model of the new way of doing computation that it has invented, but uh, historically, those new computational models then expand to so many other things, you know, beyond spreadsheets or S3 or a CRM. And so that's the stage that the, that the Chainlink network is at uh, and is successfully doing because now it's, it's not just an idea, it's not just a hope or a plan. These other categories of services like compute and cross-chain, in addition to data, are all live. They're all live on production and they're all being used in congruence with the data and uh, being combined to create these advanced applications, which are going on to continually redefine our industry in a more useful and useful way for more and more users. So I, I feel that the Chainlink network is not fully understood, but as it does more and more and as it, it takes on a greater and greater role in more and more uh, applications and makes them into verifiable applications, it will uh, become obvious and obviously the, uh, the system that allows that verifiability and that uh, decentralized security to come into these various systems. So I think, um, I think it's all very simple and limited until it's obvious that it's much more than that. And we're now going, uh, going in that direction of being much more. <laughs>